Yo, what's going on guys? It's Cynical and welcome back to another video. Today for you guys, I wanted to give you a pretty straightforward little tutorial on how to mod Kingdom Hearts 3 as well as change your playable character and party setup. This video is intended for people that are looking to obviously get into Kingdom Hearts 3 modding and I think the first thing you should absolutely get into first is a mod menu. This is going to be the sole thing that allows you to change up your party layout as well as the playable character. This video is intended for people that want to know how this all works. It's very, very simplistic. But because of the fact that I actually got uh, quite a few requests on the Olympus Arena mod video with people saying can you please show how to play as different other playable characters or to just simply mod Kingdom Hearts 3, I thought I'd just make a tutorial video as I'm sure throughout this year there's going to be many people purchasing the Kingdom Hearts games, specifically number 3, for PC and will want to know how to mod and play as different other characters. Now, for simplicity's sake, I am going to revolve this tutorial around the C mod menu created by Critic Perfect. I personally believe that this is the most simplistic mod menu uh, that is currently on offer. There are three in total, the two other ones being the Xyblade Blade mod menu as well as the Trace mod menu. All three of them have slightly different things they offer, with Xyblades Blades being the most up-to-date, with the most recent recent release being January of this year. I don't want to right now, Xyblade is still working on this mod menu, it is a work in progress and there's a lot of cool things you can do with it, but if you are just starting out with Kingdom Hearts 3 modding and you just want to know how to change up your party and playable character, the C mod menu is absolutely hands down the most simplistic to use. Now Kingdom Hearts 3 modding is very easy, very straightforward. Do not be scared or put off by some kind of strenuous process, it's as simple as dragging and dropping a single file into a specific folder in the Kingdom Hearts 3 folder. The website that you're going to want to use to obtain all of your Kingdom Hearts 3 mods is the Nexus, specifically the Kingdom Hearts 3 Nexus. This is a mod database for not just Kingdom Hearts, but a whole range of games. If you've modded games in the past, then you will be familiar with the Nexus. But yes, there is a Nexus now for literally every single Kingdom Hearts game. I'm going to leave the download link to specifically the C mod menu in the description down below. Make sure you go ahead and download it. What you'll next want to do is find where you have Kingdom Hearts 3 downloaded. For most of you guys, it should be within program files, then within the Epic Games games folder. For me, it's in a bit of a different location. It's within my E drive, then in games, then in a folder, KH 1.5, 2.5, then Kingdom Hearts 3. I know it's messy. My organization skills are absolutely shocking. You go into the Kingdom Hearts 3 folder, click on Kingdom Hearts 3 again, content, packs and when you go into this folder for the very first time you will not have these two folders here what you want to do is you want to create a brand new folder named dash mods once that folder is created this is where you're going to drag and drop any pack mod files uh, into this folder in order to then mod kingdom hearts so do be aware that you can have multiple different mods running all at the same time. As you guys can see, I have a good amount of mods already installed in this folder. Don't worry, there is nothing that you actually have to do within Kingdom Hearts 3 to activate mods. Once they are simply dragged and dropped into this folder, they are activated from here on forward. Do know though that you should not have multiple mods in the mod folder that replaces the same thing. As an example, a Keyblade mod, let's say for the Kingdom Key, you don't want duplicates of mods that specifically replace the Kingdom Key because things can start to get a little bit buggy and the mods won't work. So long as the mods all change separate different things, you can have as many mods as you want in this folder. For the C mod menu, you will have two files that you're going to want to drag and drop. The C mod menu 99 pack as well as the Simba patch. Simply drag and drop them into the mod folder. As you guys can see, I've already got them in here and that's it, you're done. The C mod menu is now active in Kingdom Hearts 3. To remove a mod, all you have to do is simply just delete the file in the mod folder. Also, don't worry about any kind of save file corruption. If you've since saved the game since installing a mod, uh, the save file will work absolutely fine, even if you have uninstalled a specific mod. So once you guys are in game, go down to the link menu and summon Simba. This is going to be the way that you activate the mod menu. Now, you will notice that Sora is stuck on the summoning animation. Do not worry, this happens literally every single time you activate the mod menu 
for the first time uh, activating the menu when you boot up the game. Uh, he will be stuck doing this for probably about 20 to 30 odd seconds. However, when you go to reactivate the menu, resummoning Simba once again, anytime after this, it should be almost instantaneous. As soon as you've summoned Simba, simply move forward and you'll notice that there is now a little triangle to the right of your screen. You can click on that with the mouse and it should bring up some menu options. Now do keep in mind that the triangle will disappear uh, every single time you transition into a different area. So this essentially means that in order to reactivate the menu, you will need to summon Simba if you do transition into a new area. So once you're in this menu, you'll want to click on party options. This is where you're going to control your playable character as well as who you want in your party setup. Now, as you guys can see, we have a lot of different playable character options right here. Uh, we've got all of the different versions of Sora. On top of that, we have pre-haircut Riku, normal Kingdom Hearts 3 Riku, Mickey, Roxas, Kairi, and Aqua. To select the character, you just simply click on them, and there we go. We're now playing as Aqua. Now, uh, I do suggest closing the mod menu once you've selected the character that you want to play as and then click on the game and then start controlling the character with your controller. If the menu is open uh, and you start playing around with the game with the controller, you will start to uh, activate all sorts of different mod menu options. So just make sure you close the menu, click on the uh, game first with your mouse and then start controlling the character with the controller. Now these characters are very limited in what they can do because they were never intended to be used outside of the specific scenario that they're meant to be used in. This means for the likes of being able to wall run, use the parkour system, uh, flow motion, air stepping, none of that is going to work. They're also very limited in what kind of magics they can use. There's obviously not much in the ways of form changes, there's no link usage, and you also can't play around with the camp menu going into the equipment settings and changing certain items and whatnot. Again, just because they were never intended to be used like this. Now, there are mods that make characters completely playable from start to finish in the ways of being able to use and do all of the different things Sora would usually be able to do. What this is, is this generally replaces, for one, the model of Sora with the corresponding character you want to become playable, and then on top of that, all of the different animations that correspond to Sora's abilities. This then gives you that illusion that you can actually play as, for an example, Kairi from start to finish, being able to do everything you usually would be able to do. Uh, I will leave two mod links in the description down below if you want a fully fleshed out playable Riku and Kairi mod. This is known as Project Equinox for Riku and Project Embrace for Kairi. I do plan on doing feature videos for both of these mods at a later date. Uh, but these do allow you to play as both characters from start to finish with all of their own animations, uh, unique other additions like unique loading screens, battle quotes, keyblades, all of that shebang to give you a proper playable Kairi or Riku experience. There's a lot of different playable character mods that are fleshed out and created by the community. But if you just want a really easy way to play as Roxas, Kairi, uh, Riku, Aqua. This is the simplest way to do so. So to change your party layout, you'll see Donald down at the bottom right. These are all of the different party members that you can choose from, ranging from the Guardians of Light to that of the different Disney World party members. You will notice that I don't have Donald and Goofy with me currently, I'm by myself. That's because if you select Reset Party, it will boot any party member out of your current Party. Now you can only generally have up to five additional party members with you at one time However, the trace mod menu created by Lusu allows you to spawn in like as many party members as you want However, doing that can overload and eventually crash the game and uh, Generally speaking even with about five party members uh, even with the C mod menu most of the time only two of the party members actually work in the ways of fighting with and for you. So just to give you guys an example, I'm also going to spawn in Kairi there. Let's just spawn in another Sora for the sake of it. And let's also throw in Goofy for good measure. So as you can see, Aqua and Goofy are following me, but the rest of the gang are just kind of doing their thing. They're taking a day off. They're like, actually, you know what? No, those monkeys are way too dangerous for our own good. 
we're gonna stay back here from a distance. However, sometimes, yes, they will work. It's kind of up to them what they want to do from any of the party members uh, that aren't the first two that you have in your party. So yeah, Kyrie is sort of a little bit broken at the back there, but it's up to you to create your own unique party setup. And also, I thought I'd just quickly show off uh, Mickey because he's a little bit of a different case in the ways of actually being playable. As we know, we got to play as Mickey in Kingdom Hearts 3 Reminds, but it's more of just a specific scenario sequence that Mickey is playable. Now, usually in the Reminds segment, when we're trying to save Sora, Mickey is extremely slow because the life force is being sucked out of his mouse hole. So Critic has actually sped up the movement of Mickey so that he is playable to a degree of being enjoyable. Uh, but there's not really too much you can do with Mickey. As you can see, really, the only thing we can do is attack. But yeah, you can play as Mickey, and you can actually damage things, attack things. It is certainly fun to just muck around with, and it is funny to see Mickey Mouse after the effects of about 26 coffees. Also, too, if your game ends up soft-locking or you get stuck for whatever reason, access the C mod menu, uh, click on the back icon up the top right, and then click on Reset Level. However, though, guys, for those of you that needed this little tutorial rundown, hopefully you have found this helpful. Kingdom Hearts 3 modding is so streamlined in the ways of accessing mods, installing them, uninstalling them, uh, just compared to other games out there. And you'll definitely want to keep your eyes on the modding space. There's some really cool stuff that's currently in development, and I'm sure that throughout 2022, there's going to be some really, really impressive custom content uh, that we will see surface. However, dudes, I'm Cynical. Hopefully, you're having a fantastic day, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.